When you have important decisions to make, how much time do you spend seeking the counsel of the Lord? How much praying do you do about that? How much seeking in the scripture do, do you uh, uh, delve into to, uh, to seek the answers that the Lord would have when it comes down uh, to those important decisions? Now, you know, in what ways do you seek the counsel of the Lord concerning those important decisions? And then further, let me ask you this, in what ways does the Lord answer you? You know, there are many ways that, that, that the Lord can speak to us. He can speak to us through prayer. Uh, he can speak to us uh, through uh, our, the, the Holy Spirit, through circumstances. He can speak to us through uh, the messages that you'll hear preached. Uh, he'll speak to you today if you're here to listen to him. Well, uh, today we're going to look at, at an occasion that we read in the scripture of uh, David having a rival king out of the book of 2 Samuel chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 11. So grab your Bible, come on back. We look forward to having you with us. Hey folks, welcome to the uh, Wednesday evening Bible study of Central Baptist Church of Oak Ridge, North Carolina. Uh, I'm Pastor Roy. We're glad that you're joining us. And a moment ago, I mentioned that uh, we're going to be looking at passages that are going to come out of the book of 2 Samuel chapter 2. So if you've got your Bible, and I hope you do, uh, go ahead and turn on over uh, in those passages with us. And uh, we're going to look uh, at a particular instance of uh, not only David having a rival king, but how David uh, handled important decisions in his life and, and ways that we can uh, take note of how David handled situations that we might be able to be as faithful and do the same thing uh, as he did in regard to these particular passages. So we're looking at uh, the second Samuel chapter two, uh, and we're going to be uh, uh, reading uh, verses one through 11. It says, uh, <clears throat> it happened after this, that David inquired of the Lord, saying, uh, Shall I go up to any of, of the cities of, of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there, uh, and his, his two wives also, Ahinamim, and the, Jez, the Jez, uh, Jezreelite, and Abigail, uh, the widow of Nabal, the Carmonite. And David brought up uh, the men who were with him, every man uh, with his household, so they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Verse 4, then the men of Judah came, uh, and there uh, they anointed David king over the house of Judah, and they told David, saying, the, the men of uh, Jebesh Gilead uh, were the ones who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of uh, Jebesh Gilead uh, and said to them, You are blessed of the Lord, for you have shown this kindness uh, to your Lord, to Saul, and have buried him. Uh, and now may the Lord show kindness uh, and truth to you. I also will repay you uh, with this kindness uh, because you have done this thing. Now, therefore, let your hands be strengthened uh, and be valiant. Uh, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. Uh, verse 8, but Abner, the son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, uh, took uh, uh, Ishabet, uh, the son of Saul, and brought him over to uh, Menahem, uh, and he made him king over Gilead over the Asherites, over, the, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, over uh, Benjamin, and over all Israel. Uh, Ishabeth, uh, Saul's son, was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel, uh, and he reigned two years. Only the house of Judah followed David. Uh, and the, the time that David w was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Let's pray together. Father, as we come to you now, we're, we're grateful and thankful for the fact that, uh, Lord, you don't leave us hanging uh, when it comes down to big decisions and circumstances in our lives. Uh, you simply want us to call upon you, to trust on you, and Father, often to wait on uh, on you as you guide us along the path that you would have us to take. Lord, today I pray that we would learn some skills that uh, that David uh, initiated in his time uh, in his dealings uh, as it was leading up to him being king and even uh, after king. Uh, Lord, help us to look at those qualities, and, and Lord, may we seek the opportunity uh, to, to have that title, a man or woman, after 
after God's own heart, just as David did. Lord, bless our time. I pray that you would use me as your messenger for these moments that you might truly be uh, lifted up. And, and Lord, we pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Uh, today, uh, as we're looking at the, the scriptures in our story, David uh, inquired of the Lord concerning his return to Judah after Saul's death. Now, you got to remember, you know, as these passages that we've been looking at over the past couple weeks, uh, we were seeing how, you know, David, uh, David loved Saul. David uh, served Saul. But yet Saul, uh, although he was the king, he had issues with David. You know, what you call it jealousy, call it madness, call it whatever you want. In fact, if you remember uh, over the past week, Saul actually sought uh, to take David's life. Uh, they had the encounter there, you know, in the cave. And, and, and Saul was just kind of off and on. Now, uh, the Lord had, had told David that he was going to be king, that he would be anointed king. Uh, he was told this even uh, as Saul was, was chasing him. Uh, you got to remember that Remember the, the thing that took place in the cave was uh, David's men were telling him, they say, you know, God's told you you're going to be king. Uh, obviously, God is the one who set up this meeting in the cave for you to be able to take David's life so you can ascend to the throne. And, and, and David, you know, thought about it. He said, something just doesn't feel right about that. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked about the fact that God has a plan for your life and God does not need your help uh, in getting you around to his plan. We, he needs us to follow him. He wants us to follow him. He wants us to be obedient, but he doesn't want us to take situations in our own hands. Now, for Saul to have taken the life uh, I mean, for David to have taken the life of Saul in the cave that day would have been him taking the situation into his own hands. He also realized that Saul was the one anointed as king by God Almighty. And he said, I'm not going to lift my hand toward the anointed. If God wants me to be uh, ascended to the throne, then he will make a way for that to happen and for that to take place. Now, one of the things you have to understand is that David truly respected Saul's position. He may not have liked everything that he did, but he respected the position of king as uh, anointed by God. Those were things that David knew. You know, we can take some lessons of that as well today. Now, uh, there's uh, there are often leaders that, that are put over us that they're not there by accident. God knows and understands what's happened and what's taken place. And we may not like everything that they do, but we need to respect the position uh, that they are in. Now, yeah, so what happens is when David you know, has this issue, you know, the passages we're looking at, he inquired of the Lord concerning his return to Judah after Saul had passed away. And there were two things that God revealed uh, to David uh, in response. So let's look at, uh, at verses 1 and 2 uh, of our scripture text today. Uh, and it says, And it happened uh, that after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, to Hebron. So in that particular verse one, you know, one of the things that we see is David is going and he is asking of the Lord, shall I go to any of the cities of Judah? You know, he didn't make that plan all on his own. He didn't decide, hey, I'm going to, you know, ease on up there to, you know, to Hebron. He sought the Lord. Remember what we talked about when we first started our broadcast today? I said, yeah, how much do you seek the Lord in regard to uh, critical and important decisions that you need to make? You know, David had a decision to make, but he didn't just say, well, I think I'm just going to head on up there and be king. He sought the Lord. He asked the Lord, uh, shall I go up? And in that verse one, uh, the Lord says, go up. David asked him again. He says, where do you want me to go? Uh, and, and the Lord said to him, I want you to go to Hebron. So, uh, so he has gotten a, a clear voice of the Lord. The Lord has told him, this is what I want you to do. And this is where I want you to go. Um, I find it kind of interesting, too, that as we look at that, you know, God certainly could have just told David, here's what I want you to do, when I want you to go, how I want you to go. He could have told him all that. But you realize that it wasn't until David sought him in prayer that God answered his prayer. 
I mean, how many of us uh, yeah, is God just simply waiting on us to come to him with our circumstances, with our situations, with our concerns, uh, with the opportunity for him to provide his guidance uh, in our lives and in our circumstances and situations? Are you taking them uh, to the Lord? So we see the two things that David asked, and, and he got an answer to that. Uh, and, and so what was his response? You know, how did David respond when he heard uh, of God's leadership in his life? Let's go back and look at our passages there for just a moment. So verse 2 says, so, so David went up there uh, and his two wives, um, yeah, and, 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 and all, he, he mentions them in there. Then verse 3 says, and David brought up, brought up the men who were with him every man with his household so they dwelt in the cities of Hebron so once uh, David knew and understood and heard from God where he was supposed to go when he was supposed to go how he was supposed to go he did it immediately one of the greatest things that you and I can uh, can accomplish today is to be obedient uh, to to God when he leads us he is leading us folks he's leading us through his word yeah, as we read it, he's giving us uh, the, the, the signs and indicators and even the straight up language as to what he wants us to do. He, he is wanting to lead us as, as we pray to him. He is going to provide you answers. Now, the question is, when God gives you those answers, are you going to be obedient to follow his, uh, his will uh, for your life? Now, Things can get complicated. We're going to get to there in just a, in just a moment uh, uh, as we consider these things. Now, there's something I want you to understand. I want to, I want to kind of rewind our scripture for just a moment because I want to share with you uh, a passage out of 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. And I want you to consider you know, uh, how David's example in this instance uh, reveals that he is a man after God's own heart. Let's look at 1 Samuel uh, 13, 14. And it says this, it says, but now your kingdom shall not continue. Now, now this is being addressed to Saul, okay? But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you, that's Saul, have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So this is very clear. This was uh, you know, in our readings just uh, a couple weeks ago where uh, Saul had not been obedient to what it is that, that, that God had told him and showed him and how he leaded him. Uh, and it even came out that, uh, that, that, the, that David was going to be the man uh, who would follow him. And I love the terminology used. He said he chose for him a man after uh, his own heart, okay? Now think about that for a moment. How does David's example in the instance of our scripture today reveal that he is truly a man after God's own heart? Well, let's think about it for a moment. First thing that he did was instead of making a decision out there on his own, and just, you know, I call it playing darts, just throw it up against the wall and see what sticks. He sought the Lord about what he should do. You know, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go back to Judah? And then when he got the answer from God, God said, yes, I want you to, you know, I, I want you to go. Then David said, where do you want me to go? And he even got specific. He said, I want you to go to Hebron. But, but the thing about it was he didn't make decisions on his own. Too many of us uh, are, are making decisions on our own. We're not including God in those decisions. And not only are we not including them, including God in our decisions, we're not seeking what his will uh, is in regard to what we're going to do. Uh, I, I can say this with all honesty in the world, that, that if I have a plan, I will guarantee you that in my lifetime, 100% of the time, my plan has not been God's plan. So if you want to be about God's will, God's way, then you're going to have to reach out to him through prayer, through his word. You're going to have to reach out to him. You're going to have to ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? But then I, I, I have to put this caveat in there. There's some people that are very good about asking God things. Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? The problem comes in when we're not very good listeners. You know, once you ask God, you need to begin to listen as he will lead you and guide you. And people would say, well, how's he going to lead me and guide me? He's going to lead you in his word. He's going to lead you in prayer. He's going to lead you through the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead you through messages you hear. He's going to lead you through all of these aspects. 
I've often said that's part of the reason why church is important. Messages like you're listening to right now are one of the ways that God will speak to you uh, and one of the ways that, that, that he will help get you where he wants you to be in life. There's a message in today's scripture tailor-made for you today. But are you listening for it? Are you seeking it? So once you ask God, we need to be re we need to do a whole lot better in listening to what he's going to tell us after we've made the request. Lord, show me the way. Too many times he has shown us the way, but we're just not looking for it. We're not listening for it, and we're not seeing it. Um, you know, I've said before, uh, I've shared this, uh, th this joke before, uh, even within the church, where uh, the floodwaters were, were starting to come in, and a man was in his house, and uh, the, the floods were all around it, and a, and a gentleman drove up uh, in a boat, and he said, well, hop in. He said, I I'll save you. And the man said, nope, nope. He said, I've, I've prayed to the Lord, and God's going to save me. Well, the waters continued to rise, and uh, before long, the man was sitting on his roof, and another fellow in a boat came by, and, uh, and, and the fellow says, jump in. And the guy says, nope. Nope, not going to do it. He said, I prayed to, to God, and God is going to save me. So the man drives off in the boat. Uh, then finally, there's a, the man that's standing on the top of his chimney, and the water's uh, you know, up past his knees, and a, a helicopter pilot comes by and, and, and drops down a ladder and says, Climb on, I'll save you. And the man says, Nope, nope. He says, uh, I'm, I'm waiting on God. God is going to save me. I prayed to him, and he's the one that's going to save me. So the helicopter flies off. Uh, and then the next thing you know, the man drowns, and he opens his eyes in heaven, and he's disappointed. And he says, he says, Lord, he said, I prayed to you, and, and, and I was with all the faith in the world that you were going to save me, and how come you didn't save me? And, uh, and then God tells the man, he said, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. What more did you want? See, too many times we're looking at things to be so spiritual-esque, as it were, that we miss the simple things that God is trying to show us. So David has given us a, a, a good example example uh, of following the Lord. Now, as we've done our Bible studies, I've, I've always asked you that one of the things to look for are sins to confess. So as a sin to confess, you know, what does it indicate for you and I when we make decisions apart from God's counsel? When we go out there and start making decisions on our own, we haven't sought God about that. You know, we, we haven't gotten his opinion over the circumstances and situations. And I mean everything. Uh, I mean, yeah, that person that you may be dating, uh, the, 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 the new job situation up there, how much have you carried this to God in prayer and then taking the time to listen to see which way he's going to lead you or to see uh, what he's going to tell you. And folks, let me be honest with you. It's not always going to be something that you want to hear. Once again, we get to that in our in our passage. You know, follow, Nobody said that following the Lord was going to be something uh, that was going to be easy to do. Do we have some sins we need to confess today uh, because we've been making uh, decisions in our own lives and in our own circumstances of apart from God's counsel. You know, we either haven't sought him or we have sought him and we haven't listened to what it is that he has to say. So now as we get back to our text for today, David, you know, after David returned to, to Hebron, uh, there was an honor uh, that the men of Judah bestowed upon him. Now let's look at, uh, at, at our verse four of our text today. And it tells us this. It says, then the men of Judah came uh, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, the men of uh, Jebesh Gilead were the ones who buried Saul. So now what we've got is we have uh, David being anointed king uh, in Hebron. What an honor, man. They, you know, the, the, those folks loved him. Uh, uh, but, and, and, and they also told him something that was critical. That, you know, they, they told him who it was uh, that buried Saul. Now, uh, because David sought after the Lord, instead of seeking the crown for himself, uh, there are some conclusions that we can draw from this about his personal walk with God. David was a man who walked with God. Now, I want to tell you, David was not perfect. As, as you know, we see later on, David had his own downfall. You know, David had his own problem. He had his own issues. Now, I'm not saying that that should be encouraging to us, but you know, bottom line is God did call David a man after his own heart, and yet David still uh, got caught up in, in, in some sin down the road with Bathsheba. Sheba, okay? But what does, what we see here in our text, what does this tell us uh, about David's personal walk with the Lord? You know what? He had a personal walk with the Lord. Now, I could go off on a tangent right here, although I won't do that. 
I do feel like I need to include this. There are so many people today who have religion, but they're not following Christ. There's a difference between those two. You know, I I, I love how it's been said before that God has called us to be the church. He hasn't called us to go to church. You know what that means? That means that your relationship with God changes you from the inside out. It means that when you walk with him you, you, and talk with him, then you see what it is that he wants and, and you will be all that he wants you to be. It is a personal relationship. It is a personal walk. It is not just a Sunday thing. It's not just a Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night thing. It is 24 hours a day, seven days a week because the Holy Spirit never leaves you. Being a Christian is not something you do. Being a Christian is something you are, and it should permeate every ounce and every pore of who you are. And this was true with David. This is something that we see uh, in his walk, and, and this is a conclusion that we can dr- draw from David's life is that he did indeed have a personal walk with God, and he sought him uh, in, in all the situations. Now, even though Uh, Saul was David's enemy, Uh, David responded to those who honored uh, Saul's death in verses 4 and 5. Now, we saw in verse 4 what happened was uh, once uh, David was anointed uh, as as king, they also said in the latter part of verse 4, the men of uh, Jebesh Gilead were the ones uh, who who buried Saul. In verse 5, here's what David did. It says, so David sent messengers to the men of uh, Jebesh Gilead and, and said to them, you are blessed of the Lord for you have shown uh, this kindness to your Lord to Saul and have buried him whoa does that really sound like what we say against our enemies oh time out for a minute now it's getting a little personal gonna get your toes stepped on a little bit see the Bible tells us that we're supposed to love our enemies and we're, we're supposed to pray for those who despise us and and, and you remember uh, uh Saul was trying to kill David. He was seeking him to even kill him. And yet David continued to honor him. He continued to honor the position. And the men of Jebesh Gilead that actually went and buried the body of Saul, David sends for them and and gives them the message, you are blessed of the Lord for you have shown this kindness. Did you notice what it says? To your Lord to Saul and have buried him. In other words, you have done what was right. You have showed that kindness and there is blessing and favor that will fall upon you. And this was even you know, from, from Saul's enemy, David. Uh, yeah, I, can you do that? When, when those things happen, when you're around your enemies, those that despise you, can you truly Pray for them in, in the right heart. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying pray uh, a David prayer from, from back when the throne was taken from. If you remember over in Psalm 55, David was actually praying that God would send his enemies alive to hell. That's not the kind of praying the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to pray with the right heart. Uh, but, but, but he responded, David responded to those who honored Saul's death. Uh, you know, why do you think he did this? Think about that for a minute. Why? You know, you think it was just some sort of show or what? I don't. I think it was because he truly honored Saul. He truly honored the position. Even though Saul wasn't doing everything right, the bottom line was God Almighty had anointed Saul as king. And David was not it at that particular time. And David knew that in his position, it was to honor the one God had put in that particular place. And he did just that. Man, what a beautiful picture. I'm not saying that that's an easy picture uh, for you and I to look at when it comes down to our enemies, but nonetheless, it is what God has as an ex- expectation from us. You know, So why do you think he did it? He did it uh, to honor the Lord, and he did it to honor those who, who honored their king, whether he was right, wrong, indifferent, or otherwise, in his leadership. He was the one who God had chosen, and to honor him meant to honor God. Uh, Can we say that in the circumstances and relationships that you and I have today? Are we honoring God by honoring those people that God has placed in those positions in our lives? Okay. Yeah. In what what ways 
uh, does, does this quality that we see uh, in David's life make him somebody that's easy to respect? You know, when you're around somebody like that, that's the kind of guy that you're like, yeah, I'd like to hang out with him. I respect him. Don't necessarily think that I could have done what he did, but I respect what he did. Sometimes that, that's the way we look at it. And we see David was a bigger man because he followed the Lord and did what the Lord command, commanded him to do. And, and let me clue you in on something. That's not just what the Lord commanded David to do. It's what the Lord commands you and I to do each and every day as well. And when you find people who can follow the Lord this closely and honor him, even in the midst of, of turmoil or strife, man, those are people that, that we can respect. Those are qualities that we would like to have and see uh, within our own lives. Um, now, it was God's will for David to be king. Uh, and, and, and something ironic happens. Uh, so when we think about it and you get the picture, David's gone down uh, to, to Hebron. He has been anointed king. And immediately there's a conflict that arose. In verses 8 through 11, you know, some of uh, you know, Saul's people got together, went and got his son, and they came and they anointed Saul's son king. Well, you know, now you're sitting there going, okay, well, then who's king? Is it David or is it, is it Saul's son? And in those verses 8 through 11, it kind of tells what districts and areas Saul's son is over, but yet David was still king uh, in, in the area of Hebron. Uh, now, following God's will is often difficult, and it's often filled with challenge. I, yeah, I can honestly say that every time it, it's difficult and every time it's filled with challenges. And what is it? Following God's will. Uh, nobody ever said that it was going to be easy. Imagine what this is like. David has heard that he's going to be king. He has patiently waited for God to ascend him to the throne. Saul has finally, uh, you know, passed, you know, took his own life, uh, you know, after being mortally wounded in battle. Now David's thinking, okay, it's my time to be what God called me to be. And as soon as he gets down there and gets to Hebron, he hears that there's yet another king, a rival king that has been anointed at the same time as him. Man, that's got to be that's got to be difficult. There has to be challenges. You also have to remember some of the history uh, of the Old Testament days. You know, kings made sure that they weren't going to have anybody who could challenge their throne. Uh, throughout history, there were even times that, that kings would kill their own sons uh, so that they wouldn't you know, be in conflict and, and potentially off their daddy and take the, king, the kingdom away from him because they were of that royal line. So you know, being a king, man, it was no holds barred. It could be very, very bloody uh, along the way. And now, now here's David. You know, God has called him to be king, and yet Saul's son has also been anointed king and given even more pride. Providence. Uh, why is following God's will uh, often so difficult and so filled with challenges? Well, the reason why is because Satan doesn't want God's plan to be brought about. Uh, for everything that God has that's good, Satan creates some sort of a counterfeit to try to draw us away or to try to suck us in. And unfortunately, too often God's people fall for that counterfeit. They fall for the thing that's flashy and golden that, that, that Satan is putting out there. I want to encourage you not to do that. I want to encourage you seek the Lord. Listen to what it is that he has to say in the same manner that David did in our scriptures today. Listen for him. Wait on him and be about his will. And remember, that doesn't mean that just because you're following God's will that it's going to be easy. In fact, it's probably going to be a very difficult journey. Maybe you could think about a time in your own life uh, when following God's will was difficult and challenging. Uh, yeah, probably even as I was speaking, some of you could have recalled uh, some of those circumstances in your life when you're like, hey, look, man, I'm just trying to do the right thing. And it seems like every time I turn around, I'm hit with some other difficulty or some other challenge. Am I sure that this is what God wants me to do? Well, you know, God will reaffirm that, you, that you're on his path. Uh, most of us, if we follow the Lord for any amount of time, can remember or think back to some of those times uh, when, when following God's will was very challenging and very difficult. Now, as you think about those times, uh, what are some of the ways that, that you grew spiritually 
through this personal experience. You know, I, I've often heard people say, you know what, my prayer life was completely different after I came through this. My Bible study was, was completely different because it seemed like no matter where I was reading in the Bible for that particular day, it was applicable to my life. And folks, that is true. When, when you're a believer and, and the Spirit is in you, the Spirit uh, uh, will, will teach you. The Spirit is your teacher. And when you begin to read God's Word, that's why we call it a living Word, because it, it is so applicable to where you are on this given day. The Holy Spirit will, will show you how it's applicable in your life. But you know, part of the problem is we never get this because we don't get into the Word like we should. So I want to challenge you. Get in the Word that you might grow. Not that you're just doing superficial reading. Like we've said, take one chapter a day. Pray before you get into it. Say, Lord, speak to me today in and through your word. Show me what you want me to know today. And then uh, painstakingly read through that one chapter. I'm not asking you to read the whole, but read one chapter a day and allow the Lord to speak with you. That's why I only give you five chapters in a seven-day week. If you really do that, I will make you a promise that God will change your life, and I promise you that he will draw you close. Yeah. As you've done these things in the past, in what ways did you grow spiritually through that personal, uh, that, that personal experience? I love hearing the stories that people say. They're like, man, I just didn't realize you know, all that I was missing. And see, when that happens, it's not, oh, geez, i got to go do my Bible reading today, or oh, i got to spend some time in prayer. You can't wait to get there to find out what it is that God has in store for you next. Okay, uh, Man, what a, what a great, great opportunity uh, as we think about the difficult challenges that we have. And even as, as, as we go forward, listen, it's not over. There's going to be more uh, challenging and, diff uh, and difficult times of us following the Savior. Okay. Now, when, it's God, when God's will is challenging, there's something that is incredibly important for you and I to do. And, and, and make sure you get this. What is the, one of the most in, in, critical and important things for you and I to do, particularly as we're going through challenging times, and this is what it is, we need to persevere. You know what persevere means? It means to hang in there. It means to stick with it. It means don't give up. It means hang on. Even when it's at its worst, you hang on. Get that, that determination in your mind and in your heart that you will not quit on God. Uh, one of the greatest examples I believe we have in the word of exactly this is Job. When Job went through all the trials and, uh, and the turmoil that he was going through, and he didn't understand what was taking place and what was going on, uh, even though he was upset with God, he said this. He said, though he slay me, yet I will serve him. Job was not happy to be in the situ situations and circumstances that he was in, but he said this. Nevertheless, I am not turning my back on God. I am not going to allow uh, Satan or the deceiver to pull me away from him. I am going to persevere no matter what. Can you say that in your life or have you allowed circumstances and situations to beat you down and turn you away from God? Folks, listen, we need to persevere. How many times throughout the New Testament did God tell us, persevere until the end, until the time in which you see me? I want to encourage you to do that, okay? Now, as you do that, what role does your faith play in this? You can't do this just in and of yourself on your own. I don't care how stubborn you may be. You are not stubborn enough just to, just to be able to say, well, I'm just going to hang on. Your faith has to play a role in this. Yeah, trusting the Lord, believing in the things even that you cannot see, trusting God to be who he says he's going to be and do what he says he's going to do in his word. And he has given us promises uh, that, that we can hold on to that will help us persevere during the tough times, okay? Now, you know, this week, one of our prayer challenges is that we need to pray for one another, not only today, uh, uh, but specifically this week, but then as we go forward, we need to pray for one another to have steadfast fast perseverance in following God's will, even when it's difficult and challenging. When it's easy, every, everybody can do it. It's easy. But when it's difficult and challenging, uh, there is a, a, just a trail of those who have stopped following, those who've given up. Don't be one of those people. Don't be on the attrition list. Persevere until the end. And we're going to pray that in just a moment. But this week, I want to go ahead and give you our Bible readings. This week, we're actually going to be looking at uh, the book of uh, 2 Samuel chapter 5 
through 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 5 through 2 Samuel chapter 9. Next week, we're actually going to be discussing David's kindness to Mephibosheth uh, from 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. So as you're going through that particular passage, spend a little extra time uh, in study there. Let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, as we come to you now, uh, we're so grateful and thankful that, that you give us your Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. And, and Lord, we pray for perseverance. Lord, we know that the road is challenging uh, in following you. We know that the road is, is just chock full of uh, of difficulties along the way, not because you've made it that way, but because Satan has made it that way. He doesn't want us to, uh, to follow you. He doesn't want us to get close to you. He wants to turn us away from you. Lord, we thank you for examples that we see uh, like David, that, that even through the difficult times with Saul and the difficulties of the fact that yet a rival king had come along, he still followed you. Uh, he still wanted things to be done your way, and, and that didn't mean that they weren't going to come with their difficulties or challenges. So, Lord, as we go through the difficulties and challenges, I pray that you will just uh, draw us close to you. Help us, Father, to hold on with such tenacity until we see you. Lord, may we persevere until the very, very end. Uh, Lord, help us to pray for one another and to be that, uh, that, that coach of encouragement in one another's lives as born-again believers because, Father, we need each other and we truly need you. Help us, Lord, to get into your word. Help us to, to, to get onto our knees in prayer that you might speak to us and lead us and guide us along life's journey. And so we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, folks, thank you for joining us uh, for our, our Bible study. We look forward to seeing you uh, each and every week right here on Wednesdays. But if you happen to be in the Oak Ridge, North Carolina area, we would love for you to stop by and visit with us. Our services are at 1045 on Sunday morning. Uh, and we are a Central Baptist Church of Oak Ridge, North Carolina, located at 1715 Highway 68 North, uh, just across the street from the Oak Ridge Military Academy. I look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday as we once again gather around God's Word. God bless. Oh,